Erev Tov covering my name Steve Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live as the world is heating up. It is a very serious situation going on uh, in Crimea as well as in other parts of the, of the region there over in Syria, uh, Iran, the Persian Gulf, as well as even not too far from our own country, uh, Venezuela. And we're looking this evening as we're just kind of weighing in on some things here as the, the year is wrapping up now. Uh, Russia, uh, the, also the breakaway republics of Luhansk and uh, Donetsk there are claiming that Ukraine is going to launch a, some type of offensive there in the very near uh, next couple of days here is what they were anticipating there. Now every time that this is brought out publicly and exposed, nothing seems to ever happen. Uh, but at this time now, even the video you're seeing running on the screen and behind you here, this is Russian military in Crimea headed towards the northern border according to some reports there. And it seems like the convoy just never seems to end. One, uh, one group of military vehicles after another, after another, after another and as you can see we're only halfway through it and they're still rolling towards the northern border there uh, so Russia definitely not taking any chances on what's going on but then again you got to ask yourself the question is the possibility that Russia may be planning on the strike first themselves as President Putin has put it in the past there if it looks like you're going to get into a fight do the first punch about the best way to win that fight and uh, it, you know maybe exactly what's going on uh, Putin is getting ready and uh, besides that we know that uh, it's come out we've reported this over the last few days there Russia has moved in more fighters more bombers into Crimea uh, they have also rebuilt an airport there um, inside of there I'm gonna go ahead and take it off there it's just gonna keep on running you're gonna see this just like a miles and miles of uh, military hardware headed towards the northern border. We'll just pause it for right now, move on to other issues that are happening there. South Front is reporting Russia restricts maritime traffic in the southeast of Crimea due to naval drills. And uh, in those Russian naval drills, they have been seen and firing the anti-ship uh, missiles as part of that drill. So one thing that's going on, and also, as I mentioned, Russia reconstructed a military airfield near Sevastopol, Crimea, and they're going to station 25 SU, uh, 25s and SU-30s, both bombers and fighters, there. Not to mention, as Ukraine was reporting here a couple of weeks back, they believe that Russia moved in up, upwards to 100 aircraft, uh, additional aircraft to the region there. Uh, we have all that happening there. We have also uh, the Russian uh, fighter jets landing in Crimea. They were coming in according to, uh, to Reuters there. They had reported this uh, on their end that the planes had actually came in already and were landing in there. Uh, they show a lot of different footages there of the planes coming into Crimea and landing at the uh, air, airstrip there. Now, the reconstructed airstrip is longer than the one before. It is going to be able to do both commercial and military aircraft. And um, so it's just a matter of what's going to happen. You can see the aircraft there flying by the Kerch Bridge there. Russian aircraft coming down, showing their presence, military presence there in uh, where the Kerch Bridge is, which is kind of the strait for the Sea of Azov. And, uh, you know, very, very, tech, uh, very, very difficult position right there uh, in that part of the world. A flashpoint, sure enough, wondering who's going to strike first or will the situation calm down? Let's hope it does calm down. Uh, I did notice one thing I thought was interesting as well, though. Russia, excuse me, Crimea, the, the Ukrainian government, sorry, Ukrainian government, had made a statement the other day they had a ceasefire for Christmas Eve. And there was to be no, uh, no shots being fired during that time. And I noticed that Ukraine actually said Russia kept the ceasefire without one single incident. That just makes you wonder, if Russia can keep a ceasefire like that, then who really is the one that violates the ceasefires in the first place? Well, sometimes we overlook the obvious. Uh, also, another issue, as I said, things going on around the world. The Caribbean Sea, we reported this already, excuse me, already but uh, the Daily Mail, Russia announced its plan to set up its first ever military base in the Caribbean, the, ca the country's largest presence in the region since the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. It's supposed to be a 10-year contract that uh, they're going to set up with uh, the Venezuelan president there, 
And from what we understand now, that deal has been signed and Russia is getting ready to deploy their bombers there to Venezuela, to the island off of Venezuela's northern coast there putting them right there in the Caribbean Sea and of course within striking distance of the United States. Now again it's not much different than what we have in the United States. We have a lot of bases that are within striking distance of Russia as well especially on the western border and eastern border because we have um, military in Japan, we have military in Germany, we have military in Ukraine, we have military in Poland um, and now we're talking about doing a permanent base in Poland as well. So you can't can't blame Russia. It's kind of like tit for tat. You do it, okay? Then we'll show we can do it as well. Of course, the United States is the one that have, mainly has all the bases around the world. And then comes the other issue, and that is after the pullout of American forces of Syria, one of the things that we were stating that we believed was uh, definitely coming is that it was opening up the door in order for an Israeli strike on Iran. And one reason why so many are trying to second guess President Trump's uh, of troop withdrawal from Syria may be a cover, and it may actually be because there is fixing to be a strike on Iran, especially if there is an intention to draw Russia's attention towards Ukraine, get, the, get Kiev to start something with Russia there, weaken Russia's presence in Syria in order to be able to take on Iran and of course Iran inside of Syria and as well as take out Bashar al-Assad because with Russia moving all of its military assets to Crimea and also to southern parts of Russia there to fight a war with Ukraine, also that could be backed up by NATO forces there, that would weaken the Syrian country down with less assets there. And of course, not only could they take out Iran, but they could also finish off Bashar al-Assad while they have the opportunity. And of course, we're seeing now that RT is reporting no threat, but ready to respond. The presence of the U.S. carrier in the Persian Gulf is significant. Uh, and this was right after we had heard that the president was going to have th that particular fleet leave that area as well and return back to base. We reported that the other day. But this uh, particular strike group has entered into the Persian Gulf and is planning on being there undisclosed amount of time. And I cannot help but wonder if that's not part of an attack group ready to launch an attack on Iran. Uh, so we'll have to wait to see how that's going to go on. Right now everybody's kind of downplaying this, but uh, it remains to, remains to be seen. Speaking of Iran though, Parliament of Iran uh, rejects a motion to ban marriage of girls under 13. That's just sick. How sick can a country get when they will allow old men to marry little girls less than 13 years of age? 13 to begin with is ridiculous. She should at least be 18 or 21 to be able to get married. But no, child marriage is still legal in Iran. Watch, I'm sure it's not just Iran either. I'm sure Saudi Arabia probably has some pretty sinister rules as well and a lot of other Arab countries in the Middle East, no doubt. So it's, it's really a big problem in the Middle East when it comes to this uh, child marriages and stuff. And it's very much a shame uh, that the little girls are, are looked down upon. They are basically... Um, they, they, they look at them as almost as if they're cattle. What a shame. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Consider supporting the, uh, the broadcast. We appreciate your help. You can uh, write to us at the address below the screen here uh, if you'd like to donate that way. Or you can do so online, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Thank you for watching. Erev Tov and a world of Ein Shalom. There is no peace.